I'm absolutely devastated right now. I don't know what to do. All I know is I'm going to look for some sort of revenge and I don't even know who to take it out on. Guys, I'm here because I just found out a shocking, deceptive secret about my husband's will. Hey guys, I never thought I'd find myself in a situation like this, but here I am. My name's Sarah, I'm a 62-year-old woman who's lived in the same close-knit neighborhood for the past 25 years with my husband Jim and our two children. We were always the family that everyone knew and loved. Jim would host the annual 4th of July barbecue, and I led the neighborhood book club. But two months ago, my world was shattered when Jim passed away suddenly from a heart attack. He was my high school sweetheart, my partner in everything for over 40 years. I missed a little thing so much, and like our Sunday morning crossword puzzles, dating at the coffee shop, and how he would bring me breakfast in bed every anniversary, the pain of losing him still takes my breath away. Two days after the funeral, I found myself sitting in a stuffy law office with my children for the reading of Jim's will. I expected the usual, you know, the house to me, some money for the children, donations to our favorite charities, but instead the lawyer read out an unfamiliar name. To Julie Sanders, I leave the sum of $250,000. My jaw dropped, Julie Sanders? I've never heard that name before in my life. I looked over at my kids hoping for a bit of hints of recognition, but they appeared as dumbfounded as I was. The lawyer provided no further details. Over the next few days, the mysterious name ate away at me. Who was this woman, and why did Jim leave her such a substantial sum? Curiosity gnawed at me until I knew I had to find out. I did some digging online. I made a shocking discovery. Julie Sanders was the 20-year-old daughter of Monica Walters, our next-door neighbor and my close friend for the past decade. I couldn't believe it. The idea that Jim, my faithful husband, could have had an affair with Monica was unfathomable. There had to be some sort of mistake. In a daze, I confronted Monica, just praying that she would laugh and say it was all a misunderstanding. Instead, she broke down in tears, revealing that she and Jim had a brief but intense affair years ago, resulting in Julie. I lost it. Rage and anguish boiled over, and before I knew it, I was screaming at Monica. The woman I trusted and confided in for 20 years, she just kept apologizing, but her words meant nothing. I felt like my whole life had been a lie. Our argument grew heated, and the next thing I knew, the police were pulling up. Called by a concerned neighbor, it seems. They had to physically pull me away from Monica, and thankfully, after I calmed down, they let me go home without pressing charges. It's been a few days since then, and I'm struggling to process everything. I feel betrayed, but not just by Jim, but by Monica. Our families were so intertwined, and now it all feels tainted. I keep cycling through our years together, picking apart every interaction with Monica and Jim. Wondering how I missed the signs. I mean, was I a fool? The kids are devastated and confused, and I've barely been able to get out of bed. To make matters worse, word spread through the neighborhood, a uh, grapevine. I alternate between pity looks and feeling like the subject of gossip. My life has become a soap opera, and I know I need to pull it together for the children, but I feel so lost. I made an appointment with a therapist, but I'm not sure if it'll even help me. How do I possibly move forward from this kind of betrayal? What happens now regarding Jim's will and Julie's inheritance? I'm drowning in questions without answers. I'm worried about the impacts on my children and the other family dynamics going forward. It's hard to look at the family photos now without feeling sick to my stomach. I used to think I knew my life and my marriage so well, and now it all seems like a facade. I don't know what I'm expecting to be doing by sharing all of this, but I guess I'm hoping somebody out there has endured a similar storm and can offer guidance. Do I try to build a reputation with Julie? A relationship with her? My husband's daughter? How can I coexist in this neighborhood with Monica now? What would you guys do in my shoes? Please let me know. For now, I'm just trying to survive each day, each hour. And I know time is supposed to heal all wounds, but right now the wounds are gaping and raw. I'll post an update if there's any major developments. Thank you for reading and allowing me to share my story. What's up, everybody? So I have an interesting story today for you. That's because the second post, update number one, is actually from the view of Monica. 
It seems Monica ran across the post and she wants to get her side of the story out there, guys. So here is update number one, Monica's point of view. Hey, this is Monica. Yes, the same Monica from Sarah's post. I debated whether to respond, but I feel I need to share my side of the story because it's not fair the comments that I'm receiving. For context, like Sarah said, I've also lived in this neighborhood for over 20 years. My daughter Julie and I moved here when she was just a baby. Sarah talks about how close-knit the community is, but guys, she fails to mention how she always has to be the queen bee, the center of attention, and I always felt left outside of her little posse. Regarding the affair, yes, it happened. Jim and I had an undeniable connection. I mean, come on. He made me feel alive during a very lonely time in my life. It was a brief but meaningful relationship, and when I discovered that I was pregnant, Jim made it clear that he would support Julie financially but could not upend his life. I was heartbroken, but I did understand. I never expected to receive anything from his will, so you can imagine my shock when Julie was left such a large sum. Well, Sarah immediately villainized me, she fails to address the obvious. Why did Jim never tell her? I never asked him to keep us a secret, and the way Sarah reacted, it's clear why he never came clean. After Sarah's very public outburst where she assaulted me, I knew I had to take action. For 20 years, I've been quiet, but no more. The money is rightfully Julie's, and I won't let Sarah bully us out of it. I've contacted a lawyer to see what my options are in terms of challenging the will, and at this point, it's not even about the money, it's the principal. Of course, now I'm the pariah of the neighborhood. People who smiled to my face for years are openly shunning me now. But a few true friends have risen to my defense, agreeing that Sarah's reaction was unhinged and that I have every right to advocate for my daughter. The ordeal has taken a physical toll, too. During our confrontation, Sarah literally threw a coconut at my head, knocking me out cold. I was rushed to the emergency room for stitches and a concussion screening, and I am considering pressing charges for the assault. So that's where things stand now. I know in this neighborhood of busybodies, everyone's eager to paint me as the villain, but I'm just a single mother standing up for my kid. Julie... Julie deserves her inheritance, and I won't let anyone, least of all Sarah, take that from her. Well, guys, I'll post another update when I have more information on the legal proceedings. In the meantime, I welcome any advice or words of support. It's not easy being in the eye of a hurricane, especially when one of your side of the story gets drowned out by the uproar. Update number two, still Monica. Hey guys, I'm gonna update again, it's Monica, where do I even begin? The past few weeks have been an absolute ride. First of all, the legal battle over Jim's will finally concluded, and let me tell you, it did not go in my favor. Despite all the time, energy, and money I poured into the fight, the judge decided to uphold the original terms of the will. I walked away with nothing but a mountain of legal fees with a <laughs> reputation and shambles. I can practically hear the neighborhood gossiping and just salivating over the juicy tidbits. But wait, there's more. In a shocking twist, my daughter Julie dropped a bombshell on me. She was so fed up with everyone's behavior that she decides to donate her entire inheritance to charity. Yeah, you read it right. After all the fighting and drama in the neighborhood, neither of us well, will see a penny of that money. I was stunned. I mean, I fought tooth and nail for what I believed was rightfully hers, and this is what she does? This is the thanks I get? I can't help but feel a bit betrayed. Well, guys, as you can imagine, things are pretty tense between Julie and me right now. She sees me as no better than Sarah, just another greedy person consumed by money. But I swear, that's not what this was about for me. I truly believed I was standing up for the both of us against an unfair situation. Now I'm left wondering if it was all even worth it. But if there's one thing I've learned from this whole mess, it's that no amount of money is worth sacrificing your peace of mind. Living in this neighborhood has become so toxic. I can't go to the grocery store, I can't go to the gas station, I can't go down the street without feeling the burn of judgment stares. It's like I'm staring into my own twisted reality show, and I'm the star. So I've made a decision. I'm selling the house, and I'm getting the heck out of Dodge. 
I found this amazing little plot of land deep in the woods that's perfect for a tiny home. I've always dreamt of building one, just me, the trees, and some much-needed solitude. Well, packing up 20 years worth of life has been quite the process. It's like each time I donate or sell, it's a physical weight being lifted off my shoulders. Well, Mary uh, would be proud, wouldn't she? But in all seriousness, this purge has given me a lot of time to reflect. I've come to terms with the fact that having an affair, even if there was a real connection, was a massive mistake. The fallout, even years later, I can say it's catastrophic. I'm trying to best learn how to grow and, well, just develop from this. Moving forward, I want to live a life that aligns with values, not the expectations or judgments of others, and I'm going to get into the woods, my little woodland oasis. It'll be the perfect place. Anyways, this is it. I will not be posting again. I'm going to be saying goodbye to the handful of true friends I've made here, and it's going to be tough. If anybody can give me some advice about what you would have done in this exact situation, let me hear. But, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter, because this is over. And yes, I've read the comments. A lot of people are calling me a homewrecker, judging me for what I did. You know what? When we looked at each other in the eyes when we were having that affair, we knew it was right. And I don't care what anyone has to say about it. Well, that's it, guys. I'm signing out. Top comments from the final post and the updates. Comment number one by Double Kid. Honestly, I think Monica got what she deserved. She was way out of line to go after the inheritance money. It wasn't hers to begin with and she should have respected Jim's wishes. Plus, the way she went about it, dragging this whole thing into some legal battle and airing out everyone's dirty laundry, it's just low. Anyways, she made her bed. Now she has to lie in it. Comment 2 by Grimy Girl replying to the first comment says, Hold up. I don't think it's that simple. Put yourself in Monica's shoes for a second. And she had a real connection with Jim and he let her uh, to raise the daughter alone, just abandoned her? That could have been easy, right? No. I'm not saying uh, an affair was okay, but Monica was just trying to stand up for her kid. Julie deserved that money, and Monica was fighting for what she believed was fair. Comment number three, Double Kid again says fair. There's nothing fair about trying to change a man's last wishes. Jim made his choice, and Monica should have respected it. Period. If she wanted money for Julie, she should have just taken that up with Jim when he was alive. Waiting until he's dead and then causing all this drama is selfish and opportunistic and I won't change my mind. Final comments by Grimy Girl, replying once again. Yeah, I get what you're saying, selfish, opportunistic, but grief makes people do some crazy things. Monica probably never expected Jim to leave Julie anything, so when she found out, she reacted from a place of shock and pain. Was it the best way to handle it? Maybe not, but hey. I don't think it was purely selfish. She thought that what she was doing uh, was right by her daughter. As a mom myself, I can understand the instinct to fight for your kid, even if it does get a bit messy. All right, guys, let's chime in on the last comment by Grimy Girl. I get what you're saying, but grief makes people do crazy things. Monica probably never expected Jim to leave Julie anything, so when she found out, she reacted from a place of shock and pain. I want to start with that. What do you guys make of this story? And do you think that this commenter is on to something? Or are you more siding with the other commenter, Double Down Kid, which says, Fair? There's nothing fair about trying to change a man's last wishes. Jim made his choice and Monica should have respected that. So guys, what do you think? Do you think Monica should have respected it? Or do you, well, think that she did the right thing? Guys, drop it down below in the comment section. I would love to talk about this one with you guys. This is my revenge channel. If you guys want more daily revenge stories, just consider subscribing. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.